people are usually not very easy to change. They don't accommodate change. They fear the change. Now, how can you change that in people's mind? Because at the end of the day, any organization is based on people. It's very normal for any person, even yourself and myself, if you're used to use a certain mobile, right? Without mentioning names as well. It's so hard for you to use another one. <laughs> like I'm using my brand, you're using your brand, they're different, right? If you convince me 100 times you have to use this one, I will not do it because I'm used to it. This is my daily uh, practice, this is my daily experience. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Here to inspire the world, I am Abdul Majid Mersouk. We are interviewing expertise to inspire you by their success story as well as we are doing site visit on the spot. Today we are having special guest engineer Hani from Jagger. We'll talk about digital transformation, the biggest challenges we are having in digital transformation and the question is what is Jagger plan in case Nice to meet you, Engineer Hani. Very nice to meet you too. Thank you for having me. Okay, you are uh, having a great experience in digital transformation. Let us just give the audience brief about what does it mean, digital transformation. Uh, one of the main things that's driving the world of technology right now is digital transformation. And that's one of the top agendas for all the C-level in any organization, in any industry, and any vertical as well. Why is that? Because they need to cope with the trend of how to move their organization from one level to the next level. That's not an easy topic. It sounds easy, but it's not easy. It needs a lot of qualifications, a lot of KPIs that you need to put on top of their agenda. Digital transformation itself, what's the goal of it? It's to take your company from being manually used and using the old systems or the systems that not matching your direction and strategy at the moment to a seamless kind of operation and digital transformation in the way of connecting all the systems, all the tools, and getting all the employees and the users to use it in a very simple way, to transform. It's a very typical transformation for a person as well, but digital way. Does mm -hmm. it make sense? Yes, yes. Uh, I believe what is, if we need to tell an example or a story about digital transformation, just to simplify it. What could I, be? I will not m mention the names in this case, but I can say one of the governments that I'm dealing with in one of the countries in the Middle East are one of the great examples in digital transformation. They took everything that they have as a gap in their systems on how to serve customers and how to serve audience and how to serve citizens of the country, and they digitally transformed it to the seamless way that I'm talking about. Means what? They saved time, they saved queues, they saved complaints, all of that were converted from a long time in a process to seven minutes. I think you know what I'm talking to about seven right minutes. now. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. So I'm referring to that because I'm living there, I feel it, I understand it. And the way they did it is from top, bottom. So for example, everyone right now understands that when I ask or I have a request in this government, I can be responded to in seven minutes. That's a huge kind of example for digital transformation. It didn't happen only at the surface, but the bottom of it was all changing all the systems and the tools and the elements and the applications, which is the most, most trendy thing in the technology field right now, to match that. And they successfully did it. But uh, to be honest with you, Hani, it's, it's very challenging. It is the, it's, it's very it's challenging. definitely very challenging. I'll tell you why. People are usually not very easy to change. They don't accommodate change. They fear the change. Now, how can you change that in people's mind? Because at the end of the day, any organization is based on people. We need to believe that as well, right? So how to change people and let them not fear the change is to confirm to them and to assure them that they still have a job, right? That's one of the main fears that anyone doesn't accommodate change for. It comes from top, as I mentioned. So if the C-level of the organization, this is one of his KPIs to change the company and to go through this transformation, it will be much easier for them and to by bypass all these challenges, right? But it is challenging because you need to require many things. Number one, you have to have the budget for the digital transformation. And this requires a great visibility study 
analysis, statistics, understanding the market conditions, the market dynamics, follow the rules and regulations so that you can put this as top budget for the digital transformation. Number two, you need to qualify also your team, the before, skills bef and capabilities. Before going Sorry. to team, uh, to number two, I believe you maybe you heard this question many times. How much? Times. How much? <laughs> how how much the budget? How much the budget? It depends, and, and definitely it depends on how many users in the organization. So it's not it's not a budget that I can give you a bracket or uh, an, an, an average out of it. It's it differentiate. If you're a government organization which serve have like twenty thousand employees, that's another budget, right? It mm. can go over hundreds of millions, for example, right? Because it's not a joke, as I mentioned, you have to change everything in the system. I got If it. you're a private sector and you're more limited number of users, it's definitely another story for the budget. So can I will I not answer you on a budget clearly. Can, can I get uh, just uh, an exact example with the exact number? Look, I'll tell you about a small organization so yes. that it will be easier for people to understand. They had a consultancy to manage for them what does it mean digital transformation and the budget for that. And this was around $2 million, uh, right? What, how, what is the number of the organization? So how the organization was around 7,500 7, uh, okay. employees okay. with $2 million. It sounds big, right? It sounds big. But if you, if you understand what's behind it, it's everything, right? At the end of the day, this transformation makes, means that what? It means you'll be on the cloud as well. Mm -hmm. That's a huge change by itself because you change all the applications and the systems and solutions to be on the cloud managing also your data which is the most Correct. data is the king we agree on that, that how to king. manage the data transformation part of digital transformation it's another level so it's a topic we can talk about it for a full day yes so but i can tell you that the budget of it it's worth it because at the end of the day what you need to do is the return on investment okay if you manage that you understand what you're aiming for it can be done I agree so one of the item is uh for the challenges of uh, digital transformation is budget what is the other item? Talent acquisition. I can say this is a very big challenge because it's very normal for any person, even yourself and myself, if you're used to use a certain mobile, right? Without mentioning names as well. It's so hard for you to use another one. <laughs> like I'm using my brand, you're using your brand. They're different, right? If you convince me 100 times you have to use this one, I will not do it because I'm used to it. This is my daily... Uh, practice this is my daily experience why i'm stick to because you're happy you're getting customer satisfy satisfaction out of it you're satisfied with the tools with the applications uh, if you're a social media person as well it gives you all the benefits that you need this is what this because mobiles now is attached to us right mm. like there's something that i try to do as well which is called mobile detox to change all of that is hard so i'll tell you the challenge of talent acquisition means what people in the organization, employees and users, they're used to certain systems and certain tools, right? To tell them, I'm change the whole system. For example, I will change the ERP system in your organization. They will be scared because that means they have to be trained on something else. They have to be uh, experienced in something else because at the end of the day, the C-level will go to them and tell them, did you make it or not? Any wave that goes live in any organization inside the change, these people are the responsible people. So talent acquisition means that you need to make sure that you have the right tools inside these people. You have the right people, you have the right skills, you have the right capabilities of making these people accommodating the change and believe in the change. How we could let the people believe in the change? This is a part of the change management. 100%. But if you need to describe it in too short way, what Number do you have to Number one, do? make them part of it. Make them their own success. If they believe that they are part of the success and they will raise the flag of transformation, they will be in, they will be part of the team, they will run for it ex uh, uh, opposite to just being against it and push back on it. So make them part of it, the success, right? Number two, make it easy for them to understand that. Give them the right development, give them the right trainings, give them the right courses so that they understand this is for their own benefit. It will make the life easier. Number three, show them this will make them work less, not more. These are the three things I believe will make them accommodate the change. Uh, I heard you a lot of times you, are, you were speaking about innovation. Uh, look, uh, working in technology for 26 years myself, innovation is the name of the game. That's why we, we never sleep, basically, to accommodate <laughs> any innovation and to be up to the trends that's going in the market. And I can tell you innovation is happening on a daily basis. 
It's not something that happens after five years or 10 years. I was part of a corporate organization for all my, my life, and I'm lucky to be part of that. And I'm seeing what does it mean innovation. Innovation means seeing what the world wants and make it better. Create something out of nowhere, make it happen for people. There's some organizations that I know as well around the world and specifically also in the Middle East, in Saudi, in UAE and around, around the Gulf area that they have now um, uh, CNO, Chief uh, CIO, sorry, but not Chief Information Officer, it's Chief Innovation Officer. Innovation. So basically they are focused on how can we have this as a plan? How can we have this as a goal? What we need to do to innovate? what innovation means to our organization what are the benefits that you'll gain out of this innovation is it matching really what you want to achieve and will get you the right return or not let's take an example which is out of procurement in this case but e-commerce e-commerce is only about innovation there is nothing else how to differentiate between a, a platform and the other it means innovation how easy for you to access how easy to use the the photos that you see to purchase how easy to place the order, how easy to receive it, to pay, shipments, and so on. This is all innovation. This is not tools. This is innovative things. And the innovative uh, ideas and creativity and, and, and kind of new things, it blows in the air and it makes a lot Man. of people very successful. But do you think that uh, the chief of innovation officer or the innovation department should work with all, uh, integrate with all function, but mainly with, strategy and IT, information technology. 100%. Innovation will never work without technology, right? Mm -hmm. So I think they have to be sitting on the table mainly with the, te with the technology team, let's with say IT, team. 100% to understand what does that mean. If we innovate, we're changing one, two, three. And very important person to sit with is the CFO, the finance team. Yes. Because these are the people who wants to pay the money, so they have to have it part of their budget. And on top of that, for sure, the C-level or let's say the CEO of the organization will have to believe this is helping him to achieve his own KPI. Okay, you are working in Jagger, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't hear a lot about it in KSA. Can you tell us about Jagger? That's a myth, first of all, I think, <laughs> right? So uh, I think we are here for many years. Uh, our customers are here since six plus years in the, in the kingdom. Comparing to the world, I believe... Uh, Look, our organization as Jagger, we're very specialized in what we do. We are a SaaS organization. Uh, we, we sell e-procurement solution end-to-end, -end, upstream and downstream. Uh, our existence in, in the kingdom was six years plus, but we were kind of remote in the beginning, right? We were not 100% on the ground. We were not investing on the ground. And that changed a lot since two years when we opened our own organization here in the kingdom. It's called Jagger Arabia. It's a separate entity from the Middle Eastern Africa office. We opened our uh, bank accounts. We have our office. Correct. I'm investing in resources to be physically on the ground. I'm hiring Saudi people as well to be part of that uh, team to make sure that it matches also the kingdom uh, vision 2030 of what they need to achieve. So the investment is big. It's not small. So you are investing a lot here. 100% is one of my top priorities for the region to invest in the kingdom. And from what I see, from my experience, if anybody wants to make his potential realized, he have to come to Saudi. Great, great. If you have uh, one message, you need to give it to the talented people we have in KSA. What will be the message? First of all, I, I saw a lot of talented people in Saudi, and I'm really proud to see that as part of, of the region. To the Saudi and, people and to the world. And, and to the world. Yeah. I will tell them one thing I learned in, in my whole life. Um, just never give up. Make sure you focus on your goal. You have to have a dream and go for it. You will get hit, you'll fall down, stand up and make it happen. Never give up. That's that's my clear message to everyone. Okay, and you get that lesson from the boxing game? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was a very clear thing that you learned that always when you get hit, you have to stand up and fight again because you will win. Mm. Otherwise, you'll stay not really happy. So be happy and never give up. Uh, I need just to watch the camera and say our motto for the channel, which is to inspire the world. To inspire the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.